Hi there, these comments are for S. I'm going to just use your initials for privacy purposes, and I am Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the 7-step system to pass the TOEFL IBT. And uh, you made a comment at my website at onlinetoeflcourse.com, and I want to take a look at your specific situation. Here, I would actually just use simple past here. I took the TOEFL IBT two weeks ago. Is going to work better. The only reason we use you 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 had used the past perfect tense, but it's actually better in this case to use a simple past because you're talking about an action, a single action that has a beginning and end in the past. Now, if you're talking about two things. Two different actions. If you say, by 2014, I had finished my studies in my university, then you're using the past perfect to show how the one action occurs before the other past action, right? Okay, so I scored 63, which was disappointing. I scored 10 in reading, you have 17 in listening, 19 in speaking, and 17 in writing. You have to say, I spent almost one month for preparation, and I used online free resources, since I don't have, don't have other source, I'm the dependent housewife. I would say here, who moved to the U.S. 18 months ago. All right, so uh, actually one month of preparation is not that much. So, so don't don't act like that. You know, you 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 spent four weeks preparing for the TOEFL. Many of my students spend several months. So, which is probably what you're going to have to do based on your score right now. You see, on the test, I was nervous and was unable to to complete with infinitives. Use the base form. I was unable to complete my reading and independent writing tasks on time. I almost wasted, you can probably say this, in fact, then introduce the example, in fact, almost wasted 25 to 28 minutes on completing the first passage I would put and was left with only four minutes to complete the last one. I left my, in writing, I left my second body paragraph and conclusion incomplete. I'm thinking to retake my TOEFL on October 16th. Please, can you give me can you give me some suggestions so that I can score at least 84 so I can get in you might say here to be a little more formal so I can get accepted to a nearby school. Then you say, do you think it's a good idea to retake the exam within 18 days to improve your score? No, it's not a good idea. Because, I mean, let's face it here. What, how is anything different between your previous TOEFL exam and then 18 days from now? I mean, specifically, what could you possibly do in 18 days that's going to make a huge difference on improving your reading, listening, speaking and writing scores. Remember, learning a language takes time. It's not something that just happens in 18 days. And the fact that your score right now is 63 and then you want to go to 84, you're talking about pretty much 20 points, 21 points. So my recommendation here 
is you're probably looking at about three to six months of very serious study, I think, before you're going to reach your goal. So I don't think it's going to happen in 18 days. It's probably not going to happen in two months, maybe not even three months. However, if you're consistent and you build your academic English language abilities, if you actually build those skills, you can get better. All right, so first of all, think about reading for a minute. Your, your score here is 10. So what do you have to do to improve reading, right? I mean, just think about that for a minute. So let me give you some basic suggestions on that. And now I'm, I'm going to kind of suggest a plan to you right now that I think is going to help you. So here, in order to improve your reading score, you have to do five specific things, and you have to do these things over several months before it has the effect of really sincerely and genuinely improving your reading proficiency. So number one, obviously, is to read. You should be reading magazines, newspapers, and longer books right now. This is very important. I, I recommend that you read for maybe 45 minutes to an hour every day for the next three months. Find articles that you have an interest in. Start reading those materials. Number two, you have to build your vocabulary. You need to get some vocabulary lists. Start studying those. Number three, you need to improve your reading speed to approximately 300 to 350 words per minute with 60 to 80 percent comprehension. This is important. Faster readers have better comprehension than slower readers, and guess what? If you can read at three to 350 words a minute, you'll have no problems completing your reading passages and you're not going to run out of time there. So that's going to make a really big difference there. Now, number four, you should get familiar with the TOEFL reading question types and the strategies for answering them. And then number five, you should take some TOEFL level reading practice tests so you can monitor your progress. That's it. It's as simple as that. If you do these five things over several months, you will notice a dramatic increase in your reading subtotal that you see here. You see what I'm talking about? It'll work. Okay, so keeping that in mind, I'm going to give you some suggestions. Now, I'm going to say right now about 60% of your time... Should be spent going through these suggestions. Now, just like I said, read every day for 45 minutes. Now, in addition to that, obviously, you need to improve your listening score, too. So you should also practice listening every day. I'm going to say about the same amount of time. Now, again, I recommended newspapers, magazines, and longer books for your reading. Now, for listening, if you have English TV, that's going to be really good. I recommend news, documentary, history, and especially science programs. Write these things down. News programs, history programs, documentary programs, and science programs. These will give you a little bit higher level vocabulary, and in some cases it might be interesting to you, but you should practice listening. Now, if you do not have English TV... There's three websites. You're probably already using them. Randall Cyber Listening Lab is a good start. Go through here the easy, medium, and difficult lessons. You can get all your all your practice tests will be scored automatically. Once you've done that, then move to TED Talks. And do maybe TED Talks for a while, and then finally, you can go to what ETS recon recommends, National Public Radio. This is also a great website for listening practice. Now, as you're doing the reading and the listening practice, you have to get in the habit of note-taking. I'll give you a, an example this morning. I was in my one of my classes where I teach, and I was going over some important points about thesis statements, and I told the students the, the, the three important points, and half of my students, they didn't even have their paper out. They weren't even ready. They had no paper. They didn't have a pencil. 
They were taking no notes at all. That is a very bad idea. Without taking notes, you're not really involved in yourself in the, in the reading or the listening passages. By taking notes, it's going to help you pay more attention to what you're reading and what you're listening to. And guess what? If you can have good notes or take good notes and you make good use of those notes during the TOEFL exam, that's going to help you score much higher on the reading, the listening, speaking, and writing sections. Note-taking is important for all parts of the text. So as you do your note-taking now, it's not going to be perfect, it won't even be accurate. Remember, this is not something you can solve in 18 days. By improving your note-taking over several months, though, you can make some good progress there. Now, my fourth suggestion. Using your notes, I want you to write three 250-word summaries each week. The summaries are based on the reading and the listening passages. Now, what do you think is going to happen as you write more and more of these summaries on a week-to-week, -week, month to month basis? Your writing is going to get better. You will improve your ability to write faster, with more thought, with better organization, better development. You improve your language use. A lot of good things are going to happen. Now, you should also give, based on your notes or the reading and the listening passages, give three... 60 second oral summaries. This is also important. So the summaries again are based on the main and the most important supporting points of the reading and the listening passages. Now I even recommend to record your voice. You need to get used to recording your voice, speaking, recording, listening to it. You'll get better and it'll be much easier for you when you take the TOEFL IBT exam. So make sure that you use notes, first of all, and use your notes to give three speaking practice tests every week based on the reading and the listening passages. So like I said, about 60% of your time right now should go through these first five steps. Now my next suggestion is, now I know that you're looking for free TOEFL resources. I just gave you everything that I said so far is free. However, my website is not free. It's almost free to you because you're only paying $38 a month, but guess what? You can post one speaking practice test every day, and you can post one writing practice test each day. And I will listen to your speaking, I'll comment on them, and even give you a score. And I'll do similar, similarly with the uh, writing. When you submit your writing, I'll send them over to my teaching assistant who will read and score and give some basic comments on it. My teaching assistant will not correct your essay. I do have an additional service. After you become one of my students, you can learn about it. You can pay some additional money and have me error correct your essay, but that's not part of the $38 a month. But you can get speaking and writing scores almost on a daily basis. All right, so as you go through my course, my recommendation for you, because you have 63 points right now out of 120, so that's just barely 50%. So you're not ready to take the TOEFL IBT exam really yet. So you kind of wasted your money, but you took it, you got some good information, right? But you, you could have gotten the same information if you'd taken a practice test. There's a lot of internet websites including mine, that offer practice tests, full-length IBT practice tests. You can spend maybe 25 or 30 bucks and take a practice test, and you can also get the same information that you spent $200 to get. You see what I'm saying? So here's my recommendation. I recommend that you go through first the vocabulary, pronunciation, and the grammar sections of my course. I think you should do that first. That will probably take you one or two months right there. Secondly, then go through the listening and the reading sections of my course. In particular, in the reading section, your goal is to improve your reading speed to over 300 words per minute. That's what you want to do in my course. My, my course helps you improve your vocabulary it helps you improve your reading speed. It will help you understand the different reading question types and the strategies for answering them. And you'll have, I have an additional service where you can get access 
to full-length IBT practice tests and section-specific IBT practice tests, for example, the reading section. So once you've done that, then I recommend you go through the speaking and the writing sections of my course. If you do that, if you can follow these eight steps here, uh, I think you're going in the right direction, definitely. And then maybe if you want to make a step nine, uh, you can complete a full length, sounds crazy, a five hour TOEFL practice test. I would do that before you pay the money to take the official TOEFL exam. And at my website, I have a, another website I contract with. They're called ScoreNexus. And for, for about right around $30, $34, you can take one of the full-length IBT practice tests. And guess what? Uh, the IBT writing specialist will score both of your writing tasks. And IBT speaking specialist will score all six of your speaking tasks. You get subtotals in the reading, listening, speaking, and writing sections. And then you will get an overall score. And then you can make a decision to take the official TOEFL test or to continue studying to improve your English language abilities. So how long does this process take? Everybody's a little bit different. Based on, on your score right now, you're probably looking at about three to six months. So each day, my recommendation here is uh, maybe, if possible, two, I know you're busy, two to three hours daily, you follow my first suggestions one through five, and then forty percent of your time here, so maybe one to two hours daily, you go through the lessons in my online TOEFL course following these suggestions I recommended here. So I'm not going to recommend a specific study guide for you. You're probably, my study guides focus on 30, 60, and 90 day study guides, but really your score right now, you're probably a little bit too far. You're, you're a little bit outside the window of three months. That would be my experience. I have been teaching TOEFL for 20 years. I teach at California State University, San Bernardino. And uh, I also teach TOEFL online. So a lot of my students, they study really hard. They take the practice test. They come back. They let me know the results. So I have a pretty good idea of, of how quickly or how slowly it takes to reach your goal. You see that? So anyway, there you go, S. These are my comments to you. These are my suggestions. Now remember, if you do become one of my students, I made a suggestion how you can use my online course in the most effective fashion, but once you become one of my students, you have complete, unlimited access to all 700 of my vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, listening, reading, speaking, and writing lessons. So really, you can use my course any way you like. I'm just giving you a suggestion of how I think you should use my course based on your current score, and then the goals that you want for the TOEFL exam. All right? Anyway, thank you very much, and all the best to your high score and TOEFL success.